All right, all right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Dr. Cece Says, the holiday edition. Y'all, we have a special guest here with us tonight, and she will be taking us through grief and loss and how we navigate those things during the holiday season, especially, but also just how do we maneuver and navigate this, this grief journey uh, that a lot of us have been on. Uh, so as usual, drop hi or hello in the chat for me to let us know that you are here. If you catch this on the replay, drop replay in the chat. And y'all, please engage as usual. Ask all the questions. Make all the comments, okay? So tonight we have Dr. Tanya Cunningham in the virtual building. Hey, Doc. Hey, Dr. CC. Yes. So I see our sisters are already jumping on. Dr. Shalonda is in the building. She said, hey, Dr. Sis times too. Hey. <laughs> so yes, y'all, I'm going to tell y'all a little bit about Dr. Tanya and then I'm going to let her greet you all. So Dr. Tanya Cunningham is a sought out international speaker and coach with an emphasis on loss, life transitions and inner healing. She is the CEO of Dr. Tanya Enterprises, LLC, and Let's Talk Healing nonprofit organization. Dr. Tanya is a leader and innovator with a message that's changing the way we handle grief, hurt, and loss of any kind. She encourages people to build a new life after a traumatic event has destroyed the life that they once knew. Dr. Tanya educates others on the importance of doing the grief work and caring for their mental health. With over 30 years of professional experience in hospice and funeral service, she is seen as an expert in the grief and death care industry. She is a trainer who provides staff and professional development services, such as consulting, seminars, and workshops. She's actively involved in local, state, and national communities, providing support services by joining forces with organizations and businesses. Dr. Tanya is the mother of Chelsea, her baby girl who passed away in 2004, her adopted son, DeAnthony, and she is the proud dog mom of her Westies, Mr. Cunningham and Bentley Sebastian Cunningham with their cute selves. <laughs> so y'all, before I turn it over to Doc, let me tell you what I know about Dr. Tanya. Y'all, she's so cool. Listen, she is definitely the cool auntie, okay? I had the pleasure of spending quite a bit of time weekly with Dr. Tanya. We are Next Level Sisters. And so we have spent quite a bit of time together, um, really, over the past year. Right. And y'all, she is hilarious. She dances. She does social media better than most of us, okay? <laughs> and she always has a word. So, Dr. Tanya, go ahead and greet the people. Well, hello, hello, Dr. CC and thank everyone. You. Thank you so much for uh, joining us live. And for those of you who will actually watch the replay, I'm so excited to be here with Dr. CC Says. Come on. Thank yes. you for this opportunity. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Hello to my friend. I see he logged on. Yes, he was able to get on. So yeah. Yeah, that's the other thing. So I call Dr. Tanya Doc. I call her Dr. Tanya. I call her Dr. C. But I also call her hubby's friend. That's it. That's it's my friend. friend. Yes. <laughs> Hubby is her friend. So, y'all, we are going to jump in. Hold on. We are both trying to make sure that everybody can mm -hmm. access everything. So we are just wow. sharing mm -hmm. uh, the live. And you all, please feel free. Share the live as well. That's I right. promise you um, this is going to be a blessing for so many. So, uh, and we've had people to contact us, both of us separately, mm -hmm. asking about this particular live. Y'all, we know that grief, we know that loss um, in all sorts of forms, right? That's right. Probably has impacted everyone that's here, everyone that's going to see this um, on the replay. And it's something that is, if you live long enough, you will be impacted by it. Absolutely. Right? And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, what we wanted to do with this live is, you know, talk about the holidays and what can come up for people on their grief and loss journey during the holidays. But really, how do we approach grief and loss? How do we think about it in a way that helps us be as healthy as possible, right, mm -hmm. throughout the year, not just during the holidays? Yes. 
Yeah. And so, Doc, with that, I want to start with our first question. Mm -hmm. So when you think about your work with your clients and, and all of the people that you have helped, what types of situations trigger these feelings of grief and loss? That is a great question, Dr. Cece. You said a key word that I use a lot and we hear it a lot in our society. It's called trigger. Mm -hmm. And uh, the truth is, uh, we will always be triggered. As long as we're living, we will be triggered by something. That's why it's so important uh, to do your healing work through counseling, therapy, grief support uh, in a healthy way so that when the trigger comes, it won't um, debilitate you. So some of the top ways that I have seen uh, in my practice uh, here recently, but also throughout these 33 years of working in this industry, uh, it's going to be three top. Uh, first, of course, is the death of someone. Mm -hmm. When we experience the death of someone, that is the number one trigger because they're experiencing this holiday and especially for the first time without their loved ones. Uh, the second one is going to be by way of divorce or a broken relationship mm -hmm. of some kind. Uh, some kind of breakup. It could be any kind, not just an intimate relationship. Uh, a lot of people are going through grief right now because of broken relationships within their families, yeah. sibling rivalry, parents and children are not uh, gelling together. And then lastly, the top, uh, the last of the three that I've seen is the loss of health. When your mm -hmm. health is failing, many people are not able uh, to do what they used to do. And they are definitely going through grief over that. Definitely, definitely. And, you know, again, my daddy used to say, just keep on living. If yes. we have been here long enough, we've probably experienced each one of those. Yes. At some point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And so, Doc, what would you say, like, what, what does the holiday season do that sometimes makes it especially difficult mm -hmm. with grieving? Yes. Yeah, so in, in the onset, when you when you started talking, I love what you said. You, This is not just for the holiday, mm -hmm. this information, although we're focusing on that because uh, a lot of people experience what I call the holiday blues mm -hmm. and they're going through some type of sadness. So um, the holidays, they intensify something that is already there, uh, such as the grief, because the holidays are steeped in traditions. Yeah. Uh, that's a time when we're supposed to get together with families and we're supposed to love on one another. And we're, we're giving to other people. This is yep. a time when a lot of people give to the less fortunate and all of those things. So when you are experiencing grief, it just magnifies everything. I actually uh, stumbled across the lady this afternoon on TikTok. I think she's now a single mom. Don't know her story, but I read her caption and she was talking about uh, being single and uh, mm -hmm. she has rededicated her life to God. Uh, and now she's able to process through the holidays, even though she doesn't have a boot. And uh, mm -hmm. so I, I, of course, that caught my attention. Uh -huh. but, but the holidays, when people are not paired up, uh, they go through um, grief and things like that. But mm -hmm. something else also impacts a lot of people. and They don't even recognize it. Some people are experiencing what we call sad. And of course, you know what that is, you know, yeah. the seasonal affective disorder, disorder. Yeah. That, that happens internally when our um, internal clock is thrown off by the change in time and, right. mm -hmm. and the increase in melatonin, decrease in serotonin and yeah. all of that. So coupled with going through grief, uh, some people may be experiencing that as well. And it just makes the holidays a little bit difficult for people to even try and find what we call their happy. Because right. what do you see all over TV, all over social media? Happy holidays. Right. A lot of people, they have difficult it's not, time. It's not happy. Yeah, yeah. yeah and happy. Doc, I had that conversation earlier today about seasonal affective disorder. Children mm -hmm. experience that too. Yes. And I think sometimes, yes. you know, parents, and, and we talk about this a lot in therapy, just because they're younger, just because they haven't been here as long, it doesn't mean that things don't impact them and that they don't have adverse reactions to things. But Absolutely. I have, you know, plenty of kids, they, they're like, oh, it's so much more difficult for me to get up now, mm -hmm. you know, because it's dark outside, because it's so cold, mm -hmm. because the time changed, you know. And like you said, a lot of folks don't know that that's a thing. Yes. And so they're like, well, why Why are we having such a difficult time getting out of the house? Because folks struggling. Yes, big time. They are yeah. struggling. 
I have a, a new client, a young eight-year-old. Um, she lost two daddies, her, her birth daddy, mm -hmm. and then a couple of years later, then her stepdad. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, uh, and she said, I always kind of feel down around this time of mm -hmm. the year. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yes, a very smart little girl for eight years old. And, and she mm -hmm. talked about being sad. And uh, so we kind of talked through that and worked through that. But you're exactly right. Children, even though they can't articulate it uh, as an adult, but they have age appropriate responses. So we encourage adults to pay attention to your children yes. uh, as well as you go through the grief. Make sure they get the support. That uh, they, they need. need as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because they are grieving, too, in yeah. their own ways. Definitely. Yeah. 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 And Doc, some you said, you know, when you were talking about like what you've seen and, and the holidays, the fact that it intensifies because mm -hmm. of these traditions. Right. Mm -hmm. And and my first um, live of, about the holiday edition, I was talking about why I love the holidays so much. And mm -hmm. it's for the same reason. Right. These traditions, these mm -hmm. memories. Mm -hmm. But there was a time, you know, probably right after my mom passed where I did not want to do anything that That's right. Had to do, right. You know, I didn't want any of those memories at the time. It was too soon. It was too raw. It was mm -hmm. too painful. Yes. And somehow <laughs> through the grace of God, I was able to turn that into something beautiful a couple of years later. There you go. Yeah. But it didn't start that way. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I love how you said that because you were able to turn it into something beautiful. And I often use the analogy of the butterfly. And, and mm -hmm. actually, the butterfly was has been a part of my uh, grief ministry and practice for years, but it didn't really hit home until I had to go through that process of metamorphosis mm -hmm. of myself. So mm -hmm. I often use that. That is true. The, the butterfly starts out as an ugly caterpillar crawling on the ground, but it ends up as something beautiful. beautiful. But before yeah. it gets to that place of being beautiful, it has to go through the process and, and end up in what we call that cocoon, which is mm. that dark place. It's the yeah. tight place. That's where the transformation and the growth is taking place because it changes. That caterpillar uh, uh, actually liquefies and changes mm. into a completely different uh, being or, or insect. And that's what happens when we go through grief. So it was hard for you right afterwards, but yeah. you did the grief work, you got the grief support, and now it is something beautiful. Yeah. I, I often give a lot of my clients homework, like, um, I need you to go to New York for homework. <laughs> They're like, what? I said, yeah. hey, yeah. The next year, I need you to plan. Go visit Ground Zero. Have mm. you ever been there? I have not. I have not, and I've and I've been to New York plenty of times since then. Yeah. But I haven't touched that. I encourage you to do that. I encourage mm -hmm. you to do that because it really speaks of the life of a person who is going mm -hmm. through grief. Uh, it was something. It was a place that was very, very tragic, where pain, mm -hmm. a lot of pain took place. But it is an absolutely beautiful place now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely beautiful. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, you know, when you say that, doc, you know, when you first said, like, I give homework, like go to New York, I'm like, hey, that's my type of homework, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. you said ground well, zero. And I was like, ooh, wait. Yeah. And, and I think that's what we do, right? Like we, we know when stuff's going to be a little heavy. That's right. And, and sometimes I think almost instinctively we push it away. Mm -hmm. but, you know, you know, like in therapy, we're trying to teach people to lean into Yes. Because if you keep pushing it away, you keep avoiding it. You never actually work through it. Absolutely. And it doesn't go away. Grief, mm -hmm. grief, grief never ends. It softens yeah. as you do the work. So because grief is an internal emotional response to a loss, that's why it never ends. Um, so, but the pain of it will end if you, if you definitely do the work to heal. So yes, ma'am, you're right. Leaning into it. Suppression mm -hmm. is huge. A lot of us have, I know I was guilty of doing that. Like I mentioned, been in this, uh, working in this and helping many, many people, thousands of people for over 30 something years, but I've only started helping myself for the last 10. Mm -hmm. Imagine that I've only been applying mm -hmm. what I'm teaching others. So if you're out there listening, do not feel bad. Yeah. If you feel like, man, it's too late. I should have did this years ago. No, no. You start where you are. Start today. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, uh, you'll look up and you'll be 80 years old, 90 mm -hmm. years old, still dealing 
with uh, uh, still uh, feeling and experiencing the the impact of it. The yeah. impact of it. Listen, and dog, let me tell you. So I always encourage folks when I talk about self care to have a wellness team mm -hmm. and have some folks that don't mind getting you together with all the love that God has given them. Okay. <laughs> and my wellness team does that for me. My chiropractor, my acupuncturist. And I was telling you, uh, doc y'all before we went live tonight, I went to the acupuncturist earlier today and I had my own moment talking about my mom and it mm -hmm. kind of, it snuck up on me, but it shouldn't have snuck up on me because I understand that this is still a part of my journey, Yeah, but you know, that's, that's what I had to learn. I thought I had dealt with some stuff and I was like, no, nah, like I grieved, right? Like I had this amount of time Absolutely. and, you know, I grieved within that amount of time. And then I went on with my life, mm -hmm. but that's not how that works. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And so, you know, going to the acupuncturist and I'm like, oh, I had like these migraines and I have like all this sinus stuff. And my first acupuncturist within me, like 30 minutes of meeting me, mm. the first thing she said, she said, I hear grief in your voice. Wow. Within the yeah. first 30 minutes. Let me go give me an acupuncture. <laughs> That's true. And I love how you said that. The wellness team. Yeah. You know, I have yeah. my therapist. I have a psychotherapist. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a masseuse. Uh, but I need to get an acupuncture. Yeah. So, and and doc, all of them. When I, and I tell folks, I say it takes me. It takes all of them to <laughs> yes. be together, right? That's just what it is. My therapist, same thing. Now, she real sweet and mild manner, but she'll gather you together real quick as well. You know, again, with all the love. That's the whole, right. You know, but they they keep me on track and they keep me coming back to, you got to deal with you. You got to make sure that you're healthy. You always pouring out. I get yes. that from my mama. Right. I get it, honestly. Yes. But, you know, you're always pouring out. You got to make sure that you are healthy and that your cup is filled so yes. that you can do all of this amazing work that you want to do. I love that. Um, uh, I also wanted to mention you mentioned the massage therapist. It is mm -hmm. just that it is not a um, spa day. You know how we perceive that. Mm -hmm. Let me give let me give Dr. CC a, a gift certificate for Mother's Day and you're going to go to the spa mm -hmm. uh, or Valentine's Day. No, this is something that has to be a part of your regimen. Continue with work. Continual. And my first experience years ago was with a colleague who was a nurse um, and that particular hospice I worked for. She was not only the nurse, but she was also a massage therapist for the hospice patients that were dying. Mm -hmm. So we had a massage therapist, we had a music therapist, in addition to the ho uh, the hospice doctor, nurse, and CNA. Mm -hmm. And so I went to her as a client. And at that time, listen to this, Dr. Cece, I was in a broken relationship and going through grief. I was in a, a, mm -hmm. a domestic violence situation oh, and wow. I kept it quiet. But I went to Joe's, go, go to her to relax. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you that was a therapy session, uh, she started yeah. pushing certain parts of my body on my back. And she began mm -hmm. to tell me, she said, okay, looks like you're in a bad relationship. And I looked Ooh. up at her and I said, how do, how do you know that? So gathering you all the way together gathering and she said well we have to learn different parts of the body and yep. what they represent we got dr atkins on here who can help us with that too yes definitely so we encourage mm -hmm. you guys definitely include a massage in your regimen figure mm -hmm. it out get rid of the coffee starbucks whatever put in a massage yes. as a part of your yes. regimen Yep. So, Doc, I do just so just so y'all know it. And we're not telling you to go get all these folks, figure out what works for you. That's but it. for me, my wellness right. team is a psychologist yeah. for therapy, right? For talk therapy. I have an acupuncturist, a chiropractor, and I have a massage therapist. Come on. Now, I got the chiropractor. Uh, you're right. I got the chiropractor. Uh, but I, I include in mind my hairstyles. Well, and you know what? I should not leave her out because she she is definitely in there. I sh hey, Shani, she probably will see this in a little bit. I should not leave her out. Yes, that's right. I see you, Nicole. Talk. Nicole uh, talks about Purple Light Touch. That's a local yes. place here. Very, okay. very good for massages here in our area in the Fort Worth. Okay. Oh, and Doc, tell them what area you in right quick. So yes, I am in uh, Fort Worth, Texas, the DFW area. I am not in Dallas. All right, we're two separate cities. It's DFW. I'm in the FW part. In Fort the FW Worth, part. Funky Town. Ain't that right, Pastor Nicole? 
I love it. I love it. Yeah. So y'all, I got all the all the history on Texas and I know all of the different parts now because of my next level sisters. Because a lot yeah. of them are in Texas. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Pastor said separate. Yes, it's separate. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Dr. Shalonda said, yes, the hairstylists are late. Yes, they are lay therapists. Lay yes. therapists. <laughs> they yes. really are. They really definitely, are. definitely. But you know, y'all for real. If if you haven't already been able to tell, right, grief and loss is complicated. It's not just one thing. You know, a lot of people just think it's death, but that's mm -hmm. why I wanted you to talk about the different types that you've seen. There's a lot of different type of loss mm -hmm. that can trigger, you know, things and, and have an impact on us physically and emotionally. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, like you said, it, it's been around since since the beginning of time. Uh, but the pandemic really helped to bring awareness to to this mm -hmm. subject called grief, uh, yeah. mental health, depression and all of that. Yeah. So, yes, loss of anything. Whenever there's a loss or a separation, it opens the door for grief mm. and every loss demands a response. Mm. every loss it demands a response it's like it's not well, that's good. It's, it demands mm. a response and when we don't give that response through avoidance or suppression mm. again that's when we have adverse uh reactions to grief mm. everybody grieves because it's an emotional response yeah. that's why you had the reaction today i mm -hmm. i had a recent reaction um a re brief response, maybe about two weeks ago, watching uh, one of my favorite shows. What was it? Uh, Chicago Fire. Mm. Chicago Fire. Mm -hmm. And uh, because when my baby died in 2004, mm -hmm. and for whatever reason, I, I can't hear crying babies on TV for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Uh, it impacted me. And and I said, oh, it brought up the, the grief. And I said, oh, I can't watch that today. And I had to click it. Mm -hmm. And that was back in 2004. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that's and and doc, that's one thing that I'm noticing is that sometimes it hits and it feels like it was yesterday, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or that same day, and then other times you can think about them or they can drop on your mind or somebody says something or you hear a song, yeah, and you can smile. Yes, you yeah. know, and and that's what I try to encourage my patients with. It won't be like this always. No. That's yeah. if they do the work to heal. If if they do the work. If, because yeah. you, you have probably heard that that cliche. Some people say, honey, just give it time. Time heals all wounds. Time alone does not heal all wounds. Mm -hmm. It's what we do with that time. Yeah. 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 If we choose to do nothing with the time, the wounds will not be healed. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm, doc, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. And going back to what you said, you just stepped on my toes when sure. you said every loss Mm -hmm. deserves a response mm -hmm. mm. it demands it deserves and yes. demands yes demands it really response. really does mm. so the loss of the job lo loss of your friendships your relationships loss of your house and your car your independence uh, your innocence uh, all of that it, it demands a response because when it doesn't it becomes what we call collective grief yeah, uh, which is a type of grief or compounded grief to where mm -hmm. it's stacked mm -hmm. until you have a recent or a current loss. And it's not really just that loss you're dealing with because it, it, it addresses, yep. it opens old wounds mm -hmm. that have not been addressed. Yeah. Yeah. And Doc, tell us a little bit about how does that show up? Because some people don't know, right, that that's what they're experiencing. How mm -hmm. would that show up in someone that's not self-aware enough mm -hmm. to, to be able to name it? OK, uh, let's see. A great example would be if someone suffered with um, uh, abandonment mm -hmm. as a child, you know, parents abandonment, uh, they were present. And still abandoned, you know, mm. through nurturing and, and, and all of that. And so when they go through a divorce or they have a loved one to die or they feel like everybody leaves me and they feel mm. abandoned. Mm -hmm. And with this current loss, it goes back to that. That That's a good sign. Um, mm. When you continue to isolate, isolation mm. can be a way that it shows up. Um mm. Or, or avoidance, avoidance, and then and then some people again don't even realize that they're saying it or, or giving us the red flags. You know, they say this is how I've always been. 
Mm -hmm. I always depress. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we, I, I encourage we we unpack all of that. So it mm -hmm. shows up in our behavior um, of how we respond currently to our current loss. Yeah. 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 That's a good one. That's a good one. Because I think, you know, people, like you said, will say, well, this is just how I've always been. Mm -hmm. Well, no, like it's a pattern, but it's there for a reason. Yes. Right. And if we can get to the bottom of it, we can do something to hopefully impact you and move you in a different direction so that yes. you're not just stuck in that pattern. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Indeed. Was working with someone uh, who, yeah, was able to trace it back because I'm, I'm constantly asking them. I said, well, can you think when did this first start? And they were able to say, mm -hmm. I was about five or six. Mm -hmm. and this situation happened here mm -hmm. and I was told not to, to cry. So it started right there. And here we are in our 50s wow. 40s, and 30s. So it all there's always a common thread called a root that yeah. we have to find and identify. You know, talking about root cause analysis. I, I went to the ear, nose, and throat doctor year, a few years ago for hoarseness, mm -hmm. and uh, he was a pretty uh, direct guy in the sense that he said either you want to uh, stop treating the root, I mean, stop stop treating the symptoms, or get to the cause. He said, which one do you want me to do? I said, I want you to get to the root cause. Right. And, and I thought about that. I said, that's what we do a lot of times. Mm -hmm. We treat symptoms rather than getting to the root of it. Yep. Yeah, we'll put a mandate on it. We'll put a mandate right now, you yeah. know. And I, I think that's what people are doing. A lot of times when they grieving and if there was a recent loss, they're like, okay, well, let me, you know, do what I can for right now. But then I'm going to move on because I still got to go to work. I still got these other relationships. I still got all this other stuff to do. That's right. So that they're not taking the time to actually stop and process. That's right. That's called delayed grief. Mm. That's the type of grief. That's delayed grief. And that happens a lot. That's when I call uh, I, people are dealing with. And, and we understand that you do have to do what we call of uh, the, the business of grief. You have decisions yeah. you got to make. You got to yeah. plan a funeral. You got a short amount of time, a short window to plan it. So we mm. deal with the business of grief rather than the emotionality of grief. And you yeah. really don't get to start dealing with the emotionality of grief until after that funeral, after mm. that life celebration. And mm. after you work through probate and you do all of that kind of stuff, yeah. which usually is in the first year, uh, Dr. CC, most people are in what we call shock or the fog mm. anywhere from three to six to nine months within that mm. first year. So mm -hmm. you really don't experience the uh, <clears throat> intense intensity of grief until moving into the second year. Mm. And that's yeah. what a lot of people think. I should be better by not. No, not really. Because you were in yeah. shock. The first I, I hear it all the time. And I mean, from kids, right? Because they they either they've heard us say it yep. or we model that for them. Right. There is some message that we are giving off in some way. Right. And That's they'll right. say, I shouldn't still be crying about this. That's right. That's what they'll Why say. Not? Why shouldn't you? Right. There's somebody you loved. Why, why wouldn't you still have some type of emotional reaction? Yeah. And I see we have someone on here that says that is definitely me. And I think um, she's talking about the delayed grief part. Mm -hmm. And that, yeah, it's a thing. But, but like Doc is saying, we all have to make sure that we are addressing this, that we're doing what we can, mm -hmm. not, not to make the pain go away fully, because that's not going to happen, right? That's we're right. going to experience it. That's but right. how can we, you know, go through this journey in a healthy way? Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, Doc, another thing I um, and we kind of moved into our third question. What are some things um, that that you would suggest some tips and strategies? Uh, but one of the things I'll say to people is how can you honor that person? The very first uh, and foremost way I would say is the best way to honor uh, them is uh, to live well. Mm. What do I mean? You should be doing life better. Mm -hmm. than you did, meaning taking care of yourself, yeah, uh, doing those kinds of things. But you can't live well until you actually mourn well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the first things that I would say is, is to live well. And then you can oftentimes, uh, out, of, out of that sadness, we can create certain things in honor of them. Foundations. There are so many nonprofits and foundations and things like that, outreach ministries that are start books projects mm -hmm. that have started 
uh, as a result of the death of the loved one. Yeah, yeah. And I like that in order to live well, you have to mourn well. That's right. Yeah. And I think we want to get past that mourning part because it hurts. Yes. You know? yes, it hurts. Many yeah. people do. They want to put it on their ch uh, checklist. I did my grief. Now let me move on. Yeah. And it doesn't work like that. Mm -mm, mm -mm. There's some stuff we have to actually walk through. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doc, anything about the holidays that you think would derail somebody on this on this journey? Anything like spending too much time by themselves or getting stuck in their thoughts? What what are some of the pitfalls that we need to look for during the holidays? Yeah, you just named a couple, you know, get, getting stuck in our thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, um, but definitely um, also isolation. Yeah. Um, and, and you normally, and that's a normal response to want mm -hmm. to be alone yep. uh, because we become uh, sensitive or oversensitive to noise and things like that. So mm -hmm. um, you do want to be alone, but you want to communicate with at least one somebody to let them know, hey, this is where I'm going to be. This is what I'm doing. Uh, but I just really can't handle being in crowds, um, trying to attempt to recreate what you used to have. Mm. That that is a problem uh, for a lot of people during the holiday season. They try to do what they used to do. Remember, because holidays are steeped in tradition. Yeah. So they try to create th that tradition. And and the goal is we have to create new memories and new traditions. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. that's that's a good one, Doc. So I remember um, I, my family cooks. So that's that's what they do. They cook. They love to cook. My brother owns a, his own uh, business, his own restaurant right now. My oh. grandmother ran a restaurant for years. Nice. Like that's just kind of the family business. Mm. And my mom and granny, you know, cooked all the time, like everybody else's, you know, grandparents yeah. and, and parents. Mm -hmm. And so I remember trying to make sure that I did all the things that they did. Right. So like the greens, like now nah, we got to pick the greens. We got to clean the greens. We got to put, you know, and your friend, Kevin, was like, listen, we don't have to have the exact same meal that your folks used to cook. That's we right. Some different things. We can do some different traditions, you know. Yeah. Oh, I see my brother is on. He called me, which is what he always calls me. Hey, Crystal Lynette. Hey, JJ. <laughs> Yes, but he that's another one. I and when you said, you know, make sure that you don't isolate, that's yes. one of the pitfalls. I thought about him because when my mom passed, um, I, I cried for days, right? Days and days and days. Mm -hmm. And at some point, I felt bad because I'm like, oh, every time I cry, he starts to cry. Mm -hmm. and so I was mm -hmm. like, well, maybe I should just be crying by myself. But luckily, I had enough family folks that was like, nah, if they yeah. heard me crying, they was coming. You know, that's they right. would sit there, sit in silence or whatever, whatever you needed at the time. That's what they were given. Great. And that, Great. that worked a lot better. But like you said, we have a tendency to want to pull back and isolate for mm -hmm. a lot of different reasons. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of people, I'm, I'm glad you shared that case scenario because in families a lot, uh, we will have a tendency to uh, grieve and mourn um, behind closed doors. Yeah. So we're going to come out in the living room. We're going to smile. We're doing okay mm -hmm. because I don't want to be Debbie down. I don't want to bring you down, but I'm yep. going to go in my bedroom and going to cry. How about we just come out and cry together? Right. And uh, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. or, or if one is crying, that's okay. One is not. Uh, but just giving everybody their space to just be wherever they are because everybody's going to be in a different place on the grief journey. Same yeah. loss as far as a relationship, but a different space on the journey. Yeah, yeah, and I love that. Just how can we be and just allow people to be yeah. right where they are? Mm -hmm. And that's something, you know, whether we talk about anxiety, depression, grieving, whatever it is, that's we right. try to normalize, right? Like as therapists, we try to make sure people understand you are not some atypical, you know, case that nobody has ever seen. You are experiencing things that other people have experienced. That's right. That's and, right. And there's there are, you know, treatments. There are different ways, strategies and tips, different ways for us to handle these things. And yeah. so there's nothing about you that is, quote unquote, abnormal. Absolutely. That is so true. That is so I see one of the uh, people in here stated, I think Barbara Parker says, feeling mm -hmm. like you have to be the strong one for everyone. Yeah. Else. Thank you for saying that. I, that's another I want to normalize. Um, 
uh, that term or actually change the narrative of it mm -hmm. is what, what I endeavor to do because we have this um, misnomer that uh, being strong means it's an absence of emotion and that is not yeah. true. True strength yeah. is to be able to express your emotions exactly. right in the middle of your crisis. Yep, right where you are. Be exactly right where you are. are. Right where you are. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So yes, we're having to change that because being strong is what a lot of people are attempting to do. And it's certainly unhealthy because it's causing mm -hmm. them to suppress their grief. Exactly. And you know, we see that like they'll say the strong black woman, right? Yes. And, Trying yeah. to put stuff aside. Let me keep pushing. Let me keep doing. And we really, you know, need to sometimes just stop and honor yeah. what, where we are, where our feelings are. Yes. Mm -hmm. We see it in men as well. Yep. Definitely. Um, because again of the, the societal taboo uh, that, mm -hmm. that goes against, you know, the, the right. you can't that cry. Mm -hmm. They can't cry. Yes. All of that. So it's mm -hmm. very important that all of us, male and female, uh, express our grief. And, yeah. and, and allow it to come forth because mm -hmm. grief shared is grief diminished. The more you share it, the mm -hmm. more grief will diminish. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. I hope y'all getting all the docs gems because she is dropping them. Yes. I see Dr. Mark is on. Hey, Dr. Mark. He said, thanks for making therapy and grief normal and healthy. Yeah. Cause it is. Yes. It is definitely. And yes. this, you know, I tell people all the time, I do what I do because I love kids and I love families and I love the idea of people being happy, healthy and whole. Mm -hmm. One of my passions is to make sure that communities like ours, right, people yes. of color understand that these things are healthy. These things are normal. Right. So you don't have to be abnormal to go to therapy. You know, no. they'll say, well, they brought me to therapy because they said something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. Nothing has to be no. wrong with you. No. Therapy is a tool. It's a resource that's here to help. That's, that's right. It. That's to it. celebrate you in good time. Mm -hmm. Have you ever, I don't know about y'all, but have you ever been so excited about something and you went to a person and you shared it and you didn't get the response that you expected? Like, you mm -hmm. really did not respond like I needed you to. I really needed you to celebrate with me. Right. Yes, you can go to therapy for that and they can help you uh, walk through that win, that victory. Yes. Yes. So I tell my, when they come in and they like, well, nothing bad happened this week. Awesome. I Let's know. Talk, right. Let's talk about what great, you know, what great things happened in your life. It doesn't have to always be bad. Always be bad. That's what people think. Oh, something's yeah. wrong with me. You got to go to therapy. Yeah. So Miss Harrison said, I have a bad headache now trying not to cry, but listening to you ladies, my tears are flowing. Thank you. Oh. As my dear, dear sister, okay. uh, Deborah Harrison. Yes. Yes, mm. her husband, a dear friend of mine, her husband died several years ago. Mm. Uh, you can put in the chat. If, tell me, uh, Deborah, if you remember, because uh, I don't remember. To, I know you remember. Put in the chat when when your husband died mm. and uh, died on a holiday. And oh, so, wow. yeah, so she's learning to process through. She, she's mm. one of the people that I've talked about again that is learning uh, to uh, apply this grief information, these tools that we've been mm. given. And uh, but it is challenging. So yeah. glad that you're on, Deborah. Glad yeah, Miss Deborah, on. thank you for being here. And thank everybody for being here. I know there are multiple people on here. Oh my goodness, she said Christmas Day 2018. That's right. That's right. Mm. Christmas goodness. Day 2018. Goodness. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's and so that's I know right. you know the holiday coming up is because it brings back those memories too. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. So well, one more thing to Miss Deborah. Yeah, go uh, ahead. now you know what now you know what we taught you now. Don't try to stop the team. Right. <laughs> So let them flow, ma'am. Let God, them flow. But she said my tears are flowing, so I was going to leave her alone. Okay, that's it. <laughs> oh, she did. Okay, good. Then mm -hmm. they flowing. Good. Yeah, so I'm going to let her go. Good. <laughs> but yeah, but I, I was going to say, I know, you know, multiple people on here, you know, that I, I know personally are dealing with grief. And so I really appreciate all of you all being on because sometimes even having these conversations or hearing these conversations are difficult, mm -hmm. right? Like that's, that's a difficult thing uh, for us to do sometimes. Yeah. But again, y'all, we talk about, it's this term called opposite action that mm -hmm. we talk about in, in therapy. And so what it means is you do the opposite of what you're feeling. So if you feel like you need to retreat, you lean yeah. in. Right. If you yeah. feel like you want to yell, you do something that's more quiet. 
Yeah. Right. And so that's that's what we're doing tonight. We are leaning in, even if it's hard to do so. Okay. We're leaning in to have a really important conversation. Yeah. Because y'all, as my grandmother would say, as sure as we live, we are going to die. We're going to die. That's so right. That, so that means that that we are going to know someone. We're going to experience that type of grief. And like Doc told us, there are all sorts of loss, right? So all the list she gave us, I'm sure we have all experienced at least one or two of those. Yeah. You yeah. know, and so so we want to make sure that we are addressing things so that we can go out here and be as happy, healthy, and whole as possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, Doc, what other information you want to leave with the audience? Um, I want to say for the holidays, just just a, a couple of tips is just give yourself grace wherever you are in your space. Uh, give yourself grace. Let people know you're grieving. It's a T-shirt that I started up here. It says I'm grieving. Handle with care. Mm, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Me with care. So yeah. I don't have to say I wore that uh, shirt to the grocery store one day and forgot I had it on. And one lady behind me, she said, I'm so sorry for your loss. Can I pray for you? Oh. I said, sure. And I said, what's she? T-? I said, oh, because I got this <laughs> t-shirt on. I'm grieving. So yeah. I want you to give yourself permission to grieve. Yeah. And for the holidays, plan ahead. Mm. Plan ahead. Because mm-hmm. it's not just another day. Plan what you're going to do, what you're not going to do. Plan who you want to spend that time with and yeah. who you don't want to spend that time with. Listen. So, yeah. Yeah. Definitely do that. And really just take care of you. Take care of you and, and uh, participate in your own healing because that's the only way it's going to happen. You must participate in it. Yes. Yes. So doc, all of that, all of what you just said, and y'all, I hope you all heard that. If not, make sure you go back and catch the replay and listen to it carefully. But doc, the one that uh, blessed my soul, when you said, choose who you want to spend time with and who you do not. That's right. Okay. That's so, right. so if I, if my, my folks, you know, I know they in heaven. I know they are interceding on my behalf. I know they are talking to God. One of the things that I had to learn when they left here, that's how me and my brother said when they left here, okay, yeah. they left us, was um, life too short, right? It's too, they, I don't care how much time we had. My grandmother was 86. When wow. She was okay. 86. My dad was 70. My mom was 64. Uh, so wait, so, wait. Your mom was sixty four when she died. Mm-hmm. <gasps> Young. Yeah. Yeah. Young. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Wow. So, so uh, you know, the, and and she was the first out of the three. So she passed, and then wow. my dad passed two years later. And my grandmother passed three months after that. Oh, you? Yeah, yeah. Complicated grief because mm-hmm. we had multiple losses in a short period. In, of time. A, in a short period of time. Yeah. But one thing I had to learn was that life is short. Mm -hmm. And it's too short for us to be dealing with stuff that we don't have to deal with. Bingo. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the good thing about grief. It changes your perspective Mm -hmm. and change it for the better. If you participate in it and lean in it. If you do it the right way. That's right. If you you do the tips and the skills and you get the help that you need and you get the support that you need, you will get, you will glean some things Mm -hmm. from it. Listen, I wouldn't be this fly lady that you see today had it not been for grief. I leaned Ooh. in. Ooh. And y'all, she is fly, okay? You should be able to tell, but in case you can't tell, let me tell you, she fly. All right? Listen. I love it. I love it. And and because you've done the work, and you know, I know you um, didn't share with them your whole story, but I, I think they could all feel how powerful your story is. And y'all, if y'all want to hear more about Dr. Tanya's story, y'all make sure y'all follow her. She's going to give you the information in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And then hit up one of her seminars. Y'all, it's amazing to hear her speak. She is very captivating, as I'm sure you can already tell. Okay. But it's it's because, Dr. Tanya, you, you know, like you say, you helped all these other folks and you've been doing your own internal work for like 10 years now. And you were able to to take some good lessons from this. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what I try to get across to all my kids that I see all the babies, whether they 10 or whether they 25 yeah. in therapy. It won't be this way always. And y'all, there are some lessons that we can glean that can help us through the rest of our life if we just do it the way that we're supposed to do it. 
Yes. I'm, and, and see, and that's when we, and I know we're getting ready to end, but I'm so excited that you work with the children. Yes. You start, because that's when the enemy tries to get us when we're young. Doc, listen. I'm, I'm trying I not it. to preach. Don't preach. But, Look, but, you, but, you but know I'm Baptist. That, I don't mind it. I don't mind know, it at all. Mm -mm. When King Herod heard that there was a savior coming, mm. baby Jesus again, but he didn't know which baby. Mm -hmm. So he put a decree out to kill all the male babies. All My the point babies. saying that is that, again, mm -hmm. our formative years are so important. So yes. I am so glad that you are catching them on the front end. To, yes. Man, if I had a you in my life when I was mm -hmm. young, ain't no telling. Lord, see, that's probably why the Lord didn't allow that to happen, because I've probably been full of pride beside myself and all of that. But <laughs> but it doesn't matter wherever you are. You can get Dr. Mm -hmm. CC. She can catch you in the younger years. Or yeah. you can come with me and I can catch you in the older. It don't matter. Listen, we got some help for you. Regardless. You got, we got okay. help. Mm -hmm. We got some help. But yeah, Doc, that's what I tell them. I said, now I can work with any of them, right? Yeah. My oldest patient I think I've ever had was 82. Wow. So I can work with any of them. But I choose the babies. One, because they're awesome. But yes. two, because if we can give them the skills and tools that they need oh, early, my Early before they get set in their ways Ooh. and get stubborn, yeah. <laughs> right? As an adult, yeah. if we can do that, they we they won't need me as an adult. They'll be out mm -hmm. here blessing the people. That's right, all that's the time. Right. So that's yeah, right. that's that's my goal. That's my goal. Yes. Well, y'all, listen. Oh, Brianka said you always fly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Doctor Shalonda said Randy said you anointed. Come on, my brother Rick. Yeah. Praise the Lord. God be the glory. Yeah. Listen, that I'm um, see, Randy, you shouldn't have said that because anointing cost. Mm. I've been a minister since for years, mm. but the anointing came through the pain of grief. Mm. Now, if you'd asked me 10 years ago, I absolutely hated my life. You ask mm -hmm. me now, I absolutely love my life and would not trade anything for it. Mm -hmm. So, yes. So there, there's purpose in your pain. So yeah. we just encourage you to lean into your grief and you don't know what is on the other side of it. So much. Grief Come on, dog. That'll preach. Girl, I'm trying to sit Come here. On. Listen, you ain't got to hold it. I tell anybody now. I, look, I'll take a sermon any day. Okay? Any day. <laughs> any day. Any day. Yeah, Miss Smith said, oh, yeah, it costs. Yeah, anointing costs. And and just a little bit of that. <laughs> Shalonda said, preach. Yeah, <laughs> just a little bit of that. So people sometimes want the glory that they see that you have, but they don't understand they the don't story. Know the story. They, they don't, don't understand know. how you got there. Yes. Yeah. And so, you know, before you, before you want somebody else's life, this for whoever listening, before you want what somebody else had, just know you got to know. It took some, it cost some for them folks to get where they were. Absolutely. Salvation is free. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Whosoever will, let them come. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be anointed, if you're going to be in the garden of Gethsemane, mm. in that garden of pressing, mm. that's what grief, grief is, is a pressing. Mm. Jeremiah 9 talks about it says call for the wailing and mourning women and let them take up a wailing for us so grief and mourning is not bad it's mm -hmm. painful but yeah. for those of us who are spiritual who love the Lord uh, Jesus Christ again it can certainly catapult you to another place in God yeah and I will stop right there <laughs> Now listen, Doc. Come on, look, because I'm ready for the I'm ready for the sermon and then we're gonna open the doors of the church, okay? But listen. look, okay. I knew I knew we was gonna have a good time because that's what we do. That's what we do. That's, that's what, what we, we do. do. And y'all, I hope you all were blessed. I hope you all heard something that will help you on whatever part of this journey you are on. Okay. Right. And everybody should be following Dr. Tanya, okay? Because she fly. And because she will give you a word on the fly. Okay. So doc, tell them where they can, they can follow you. You can follow me on social media platforms. You can go to Facebook under Dr. Tanya Cunningham, a uh, like and follow, turn on your notifications and it'll notify you when I'm going live. I give a lot, I drop a lot of grief information, nuggets, content to kind of help you on your way. Uh, also on Instagram is Dr. Tanya Cunningham, on LinkedIn and TikTok is Dr. Con Tanya Cunningham. So I'd mm -hmm. love for you to reach out. If you're in need of someone to kind of help you walk through the journey to accompany you, you can reach out to, uh, to me via my website is drtanyacunningham.com. 
I offer a 15 minute, and I do mean 15 minute, 15 minute complimentary discovery session because I can discover it just like that. I'm going to ask you some quick questions and when I can say, hey, we can work together. If I can't help you, I'm going to transfer you to somebody who can. My whole point is I want you to be like what you said, Dr. C. C. what you say? You happy, whole, healed? Happy, whole. healthy, and whole. Come on here. We want you to be happy, healthy, and whole. Yes. Yes. All right, y'all. So that is it for us tonight. We have almost done an hour, which I knew we would. <laughs> look, I try not to talk. I, I, listen, doc, you know, I love it. I love it. And I know the people were blessed. So y'all catch us back here next Wednesday, 830 p.m. We will have Kiva on. Kiva is going to come on. Yes. And talk. Another one of my next level Go. sisters. Yes. So she is going to come on and talk about traumatic loss. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we are going to, you know, we're still in the holiday edition. What do the lonely do at Christmas was my theme for the holiday edition. And so we're going we're gonna to do traumatic loss. And y'all, we're going to do one after that talking about chronic illness mm. and how to navigate that for the holidays. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So y'all stay tuned. I hope you all have an awesome rest of your week and we will see you back here. Same time, same place next week. All right. Bye. Bye.